Welcome to the Devil Row Committee of Pro Wrestling, presented by the Idiot Radio Network, offering a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling with guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devil. People! Ha ha! Stephon Devereaux and the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling is here, and it's Hell in a Cell Sunday. I can't wait. I can't wait. Because actually, tonight's Hell in a Cell should be interesting. Uh, you know, that huge main event between. Jinder Mahal and Shinsuke Nakamura. I think that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm okay. I won't get into it. You know, I won't. But when we do the predictions later, myself and Mr. Bud Cassidy, who is on assignment, but I hear he's going to be calling in any second uh, to join us for today's show. And um, I want to thank, first and foremost, before we continue, I want to thank Mr. Brickhouse Brown. Uh, the legend we had here uh, this past week here on the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. We did a special episode on Wednesday night to give Brickhouse Brown the full hour. It was our opportunity to talk about a lot of great things in pro wrestling. And I really think that Brickhouse Brown gave us one of the best interviews I've ever done. You know, I've interviewed guys like Brickhouse Brown and New Jack and look, Axel Rotten, the late, great Axel Rotten and guys like that. But anyway, he's here, the man of the hour, the dude who was in, before we, I, I get you on, but let me explain what happened last week. We had a, a technical difficulty with a man by the name of O'Reilly Chambers. Uh, he somehow sabotaged, sabotaged our stream. The show didn't even air last week. I was actually doing a show and I didn't even know we were not on the air until everything was all situated. Talked to my uh, station owner and he said, Hey dude, it wasn't airing. And I was cut off from all communication. I couldn't get in touch with bud and I was kind of concerned, but turned out it was a rally chambers. He found a way to get involved with this show on a technical basis. But my man, Bud Cassidy. Oh, sucky, sucky. Bro, what's going on? We got Hall of Fame. I mean, excuse me, Hell in a Cell predictions today in our final oh, yeah. segment. And You're going to get what? Oh for three. Now look, here's the deal. Okay, now see that that last pay per view. No, see there you go. See there you go. That last pay per view. No mercy. That thing was it was horrible. I'm sorry, it was horrible. I got destroyed in the predictions. Uh, Actually, about two matches, I think. You beat me by two matches because we pretty much were going uh, pick the same picks. We had the same picks, uh, and, except for for two matches. And that kind of ticked me off because those two matches were the ones that I really felt that I, you know, I was going to win with. Those were my tiebreakers. And that was you won with Alexis, Alexa Bliss. Trash. You won with that it pick. It doesn't matter what you pick this time because – Three times a charm, you know? Yeah. And quite honestly, yeah. and quite honestly, you're going to lose anyway. So it doesn't make oh. a difference what you pick. No, 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 no. You know, we, we didn't get an opportunity uh, to talk about the, <laughs> the comedy show last week. Uh, that Idiot Radio Network, you know, sponsored up at the Brookline Pub. Uh I had some fun that night. You know, I had my favorite comedians. I know, Bud, you had some fun that night. You know, we got to sit down and, and enjoy a night out without having to talk about professional wrestling. Because I know every time you go out, people are asking you questions just like they ask me, you know. So did you enjoy last week's comedy show? No, oh, yeah. I mean, all the comedians, you know, they was, they was real funny. Good them all was? What? You. <laughs> hey, 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 why are you being so mean? Why are you being so no, mean? See, I should go be a comedian, ain't it? Well, to be honest with you, I really thought that, you know, a couple of the comedy uh, comedians 
uh, I think you and I could have went up there and did a better stick than those guys. You know, I, I had my favorites. You know, uh, Matt Wolfarth, you know, was my, one of my favorites, and and Ty Matt. I like that guy. You know, he made fun of me. Yeah. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, yeah, he did make fun of you, bro. He did get you. And uh, Tyler Kendrick, you know, Tyler Ray Kendrick, he was the man, you know, he called himself Broke Drake. I mean, it was just it, that line right there was the night, it was a line of the night for me because I couldn't stop laughing when he's, he called himself Broke Drake. But anyway, anyway, dude, it's Hello in the Cell Sunday, and we have, uh, I got some major news that is, uh, you know, rumors. And I got a lot of news this week, actually. You know, we got some segments worth of news here because, uh, you know, before we get into that news, I'm going to give a rundown of the show today. Uh, we're going to give – we're going to talk about the WWE ratings uh, and impact because compared – and I'm going to compare the two. You know, we'll do that in the next segment. Um, Enzo Amore. <laughs> yeah, guys, Enzo Amore. He's the man. And uh, Vince McMahon. Movie, come on, Vince McMahon, the movie? Yeah, but first, we're going to ask the question, the most important question that's going to be going around professional wrestling for at least the next three months is which brand, which brand is John Cena better for, Raw or SmackDown? What do you think, bud? Well, you know, there's different uh, visions, Um, but my vision is I I think he's better on SmackDown. I think there's a lot more guys on SmackDown that fit his, that, you know, that basically coincide with his, his uh, whole entire uh, skit. So that's my pick because I'd say SmackDown. You know, I honestly agree with you there because the one thing SmackDown actually lacks, and I think this is why Shane McMahon is in the spot that he's in, is true star power. You know, just like with Daniel Bryan, these are two true stars, you know, that the fans know and they gravitate to. Um, John Cena could actually fit better on SmackDown. You are absolutely right as far as who they have it on that roster. You are absolutely right. Um, well, right now, John Cena, he's filming a new movie, and uh, they're saying that he'll be back after um, he's done filming, and it will be during a holiday run for the WWE. And they want him to continue this free agent status to where he can go from any show he wants to go to. You know, uh, I think that is cool. I really do because you never know who he's going to feud with on both. But if he had to settle, I have to agree with you. I think that he would be better off in SmackDown or on SmackDown Live. And also, it would give a um, give a rub to that show, it's all, it, and it's also the first show that he started on, you know, it was his show right. first, you know, so I most definitely agree with you there um, he has a couple of movies coming out right now um, and this one I, I can't wait for the one he's going for, uh, Daddy's Home 2 it'll be, uh, that's coming out uh, November 10th of this year and I, I'm looking forward to seeing John Cena in that, but uh, he's also going to be in the Bumblebee movie which is uh, one of the tran- one of the Transformers movies that they have coming out, uh, I-, I heard he's going to have a big role in that movie as well. So I just hope that uh, if they're going to continue this SmackDown and Raw, where he can you know go to both shows or either show, which whatever one he chooses, you know I would love that. I would love for them to add NXT in that equation. If he's going to have the power to go to any show he wants as a free agent, why not? You know, test the waters at NXT. Right. I mean, if you think about it, if you if, add John Cena to NXT, yeah, it probably wouldn't fit. But if you're as a star, as a superstar, going to NXT, he chooses to go to NXT. You know, you know what they're trying to have us believe. NXT is like the ECW of uh, today. But back in the day when ECW was around, a huge star went to ECW. You know, it did make ECW look like it was a a company that was on a rise, even though we kind of knew the working relationship between Vince McMahon and and Paul Hammond. Anyway, but are you interested in seeing Vince McMahon on the silver screen? 
I mean, I'm open to it. I, you know, I, I, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, you know, I, I don't think he's, I don't think, has he ever, ever been in on a silver screen? Other than, like, no. I think once. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think the only movie that I could ever see, ever seen Vince McMahon in was Beyond the Mat. And right. that was the documentary they did years ago on professional wrestling. The kind it of was exposed, the worst freaking movie ever put out. I mean, it exposed the business bad. Oh, my goodness. And I couldn't believe he let that go. That was so insane during that time. Like, Vince McMahon, you are you are the man of, you are the god of this business. For you to just let them in like that, and then people, you know, there's a lot of situations that happen, you know, leading up to that to that movie, because Vince McMahon was always trying to tell professional wrestling fans that this was a work, but anyway. Um, and, and he was also You there? Done. The, the Vince McMahon movie, the biopic. Uh, the script has been done since 2015. WWE has gotten involved in this project. And of course, there was a bunch of rewrites. You know, of course, there was a bunch of rewrites. You know, uh, I don't think they're going to tell the part where Vince McMahon was, you know, where he lived in a trailer park in North Carolina. Grow, he grew up in a trailer park in North Carolina. I don't think they're going to tell that part. And I hope they do. I really do. Because they really need to show where this man came from, you know. Yeah, his dad was one of the most uh, successful promoters in professional wrestling. Vince McMahon was not with his dad growing up. You know, he lived right. in North Carolina, and this man fought hard to get where he's at now, you know. Took on the U.S. government. That should be some good, a good juicy piece, uh, piece right there. I want to see what happened behind the scenes. How what, yeah, Vince is... Absolutely- Go ahead. I said you're absolutely right. Um, Vince Senior, he he made the stepping stone, and Vince McMahon Junior, he wrote, he uh, raised it. So yes, took it to another level forever, <laughs> forever. Uh, you know, if they do this movie, okay. Um, they're talking about bringing in Bradley Cooper to play Vince McMahon and Bradley Cooper. He's uh, probably most known for the American sniper uh, movie, but he, we know, I know Bradley Cooper for other movies, you know, uh, uh, the hangover <laughs> for instance, but Bradley Cooper playing Vince McMahon. What do you think about that? The American sniper. Oh, I can hear Vince other than that. I can hear him selling that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it would be a good. I mean, I think it'd be a good idea. Um, but I mean, it can go either way too. I mean, it well, can either get really like good or it can get really, really bad. Well, who would you like to see play Vince McMahon if if it wasn't Bradley Cooper? Honestly, and mm-hmm. I know you're gonna get pissed off when I say this, but I think Triple H could do a good job. Actually, I'm not. I wouldn't get pissed off at. Ooh, you know that's not a bad. That is not a bad suggestion. That is not a bad suggestion. I, I'm really. I'm. I'm. You know. Ooh, man, you got me thinking there because I'm. I'm sitting here thinking. Okay, we go with Vince McMahon. Uh, we have three different levels of this of Vince McMahon, and you know, young Vince. You know. Uh, before the WWF, you know, before he made it what it became, um, the Hogan era events, and I'm going to say, and I'll say Hogan era, and they can cover that in two ways, and that's when he when he helped build Hulk Hogan to what he what Hogan became, and also to where uh, when Hogan left and went to WCW, and he had to defeat Hulk Hogan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. And then. They can go with the the Vince, you know, as he stepped away from the wrestling business. So you got three levels of Vince McMahon, you know, three levels. Because, yeah, he's not in he, – he, he's not on camera, you know, as he used to be. So he's behind the scenes, of course. But 
uh, that I think that would be some uh, some cool stuff you could get out of that. I think. Man, like I really want to. I don't want to see Vince McMahon with his grandkids and so forth. I don't think that would be cool. So yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna yeah. I say they just end it after the Attitude Era. Just end the movie after right. after he defeated as he shows. I can see it now. They end they end it with him showing up on Monday Nitro. And that's and you know and he says and they give the la- the going into that promo and it fades to black and it just you know uh, gives you some little description of what happens after you know the takeover and how he continues to roll the world. I think right. that would be cool. I really do. So are you excited about seeing this movie? Hell yeah, dude. Before we go to a break, uh, I'll, speaking of some movie news, you know Batista, he's uh, making some more money. He, he's making that money. You know he's in that Blade Runner uh, twenty forty nine movie. Uh, but he signed a new deal uh, with uh, a media company, STX Entertainment, and it's a pretty. It's a uh, he's going to star and produce in a series of action comedy films, and uh, they think that Batista has the he possibly could be the next rock, the next Dwayne Johnson. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that's going to happen because Batista, I think he's, what, 50? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, does he have the, I mean, does he have uh, the charisma and the look and everything to become a, a big action star? Yes. Can he become uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger type star? Yes. Uh, but do I see him leading you know, movies for the next 10 years? No, maybe three. So that could be interesting to see. But, uh, you know, Batista, this is Dave Batista. He's going to get some people uh, that's going to watch the movie just because he's Dave Batista. But also he's, you know, he's crossed over. He did the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, uh, and his name is getting out there. So what do you think? You think Batista's going to do good on this little production company deal? See, this is where I mean he's different. Um, I do. Do I do I, do I hope he does good? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, but the thing of it is, is is I don't like Batista. You don't? I don't think the I I I, I just don't like him. <laughs> I didn't like him as a wrestler. I don't like him as an actor. So. Well, you know, okay. Here's where. That's good. I'm happy we can do this because. When he was starting to rise through the, you know, uh, through the WWE, and people were calling him the next big thing, you know, uh, I really wasn't a fan of his either. I thought he was always better off as a heel. When they turned him face, I thought that was a huge mistake. But they wanted a monster to go up against and beat Triple H, which I, I just, uh, I never got it, you know. Um, the the baby face Batista thing. His promos were trash as a baby face. He, I mean, he couldn't cut a promo. But as a heel, he looked like a cocky bastard, like somebody you really wanted to beat the hell out of him. But you just know you couldn't because look how big he was, and you know what I'm saying. But you wanted to beat the hell out of him because he talked like he was the best wrestler in the business, and yeah, he was this. I mean, so I yeah, I think we don't differ too much, but I think that. It, as far as a movie star, I think he has it. He has the, the uh, qualities to be that. Right. But just not a big movie star. He's not the next rock. He's not the wing. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, and that's, we could have that discussion one day on who could be the next, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson in movies to come out of professional wrestling. But anyway, we're going to go to a break real quick. And um, just wanted to let you know, you can give us a call three four seven three zero eight eight seven zero nine here on the Devereaux Committee, and we're going to talk about the WWE ratings next. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You're listening to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. For all your heating and cooling needs, service, and installation, contact our friends at Complete Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, 412-513-3001. Doesn't your family deserve complete comfort? Looking for a creative idea for meetings, business lunches, and special events? Call Spiels on Wheels, food truck, and catering, and take the stress away. 
For more information, call them at 724-244-9881 or on Facebook at facebook.com slash wheels. You're listening to Idiot Radio, taking it to the edge and back. Pizza and Gyro Express, 801 O'Neill Boulevard in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. For menus, coupons, specials, and catering info, visit our website at pizzaandgyroexpress.com. Order online or by phone at 412-672-2182. Don't forget about the lunch buffet and drink every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for just $10. The original Pizza and Gyro Express. Don't settle for anything less. You know, we got a stellar game coming up here. And I'm thinking about ordering, you know, some of that delicious. Mm. Anyway, guys, we're back. Devereaux Committee for Wrestling. Bud Cassidy, Stefan Devereaux, and uh, give us a call, 347-308-8709. Um, we got some, some news here, man. The WWE is not looking good when it comes to viewership, but um, this past week, the ratings, they're just continuous. They're continuing to slip. Um, Raw, Monday Night Raw. Uh, I'm going to compare it to last week's ratings. Now, I could go you know, more in-depth and compare it to last year at this time, but I won't. Last week's ratings, uh, they drew a 2.923. Uh, that's 2.9 uh, million people. Um, this week, that's down to 2.773 million. 2.7 million. So they've lost almost 200,000 people, which is not good. Now, his, this is how the, the hours are breaking down for them. And uh, you can, if you notice the pattern, and, and, and I don't want to hear the excuse of, well, the TV coverage for Las Vegas. No, don't care about anything else that's happening outside of the world, outside of the wrestling business. They don't care when wrestling is on. I know this for a fact. Okay. Right. Now, right now, their first hour, they opened with a great number, 2.9. Okay. 2.9 million people. Uh, second hour, 2.7. <laughs> Damn, they lost 200,000 people. Third hour, 2.6. They lost another 100,000. So within three hours, they've lost over 3, 000, I mean, 300,000 fans, which is insane. How are you losing fans per hour? Why? And I'll tell you why. The show's, eh, it just wasn't fun to watch, number one. And number two, the fans just aren't getting, they, they just don't, they're not getting this product. This product is horrible to them. Um, and, they, I remember back in, you know, 17 years ago, the WWE used to be number one. They used to be number one. one. Number one. No. And Tell the viewership and all of cable. Number one. Now they're Tell sitting at number 13. Babe. Number 13. I mean, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. How was you? You were number one years ago. Now you're sitting way at number 13. Why? Because the fans don't care about the product. They don't. They don't care about the product no more. It's time for a change. But have you watched Monday Night Raw without fast forwarding? No, I I don't watch uh, Raw live. Yeah, but and do you fast forward through through Raw when you do watch it? Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I do too. Um, that's not good. That, I think that's. I think that's not good at all. Um, I also, I want to talk about SmackDown's ratings because it's not doing well either. Right now, SmackDown's ratings is sitting at, last week, they started at, what, had 2.5 million. Past week, they had 2.3 million. They lost 200,000 people in 20 weeks. Now, I'm not going to break into, I mean, break down the hours but they're still blaming the Las Vegas shooting coverage. Now, I'm going to say rest in peace, you know, my condolences and so forth. But, again, wrestling fans wouldn't care if the world was ending around them. They're still going to watch wrestling if the product is good. So this has nothing to do with the Las Vegas shooting coverage. This has nothing to do with it. The product sucks. They might have went and watched Monday Night Football. 
The product sucks. No. But is there any way you think the WWE can bring these ratings back up? Because they have – Yeah. I, I have a suggestion, but go ahead. They need a new credit team. Because <laughs> all these storylines, they suck. Yeah. And another thing, too, is is, is how are they going to build Braun Strowman and make him lose in the same in, in, in the fashion that they did at the last pay-per-view? I'm yeah. sitting there at the TV, and my mouth just hit the damn floor, and I about threw something at my TV. I'm like, yeah. are you freaking kidding me? One F5, yeah. he's done. Yeah. So you just Brock wrote the guy for, for, how long, for, for how long now? And you just do it all the way in a matter of 30 seconds. And actually, let's, okay, you're absolutely right, and, but I'm going to go back in time. This is how they used to build Hulk Hogan challengers. They built them up for, you know, months. And then when they got in the ring with Hogan, Hogan, you know, would take that baby face beating, and then he'll come back and do some dirty tactics, and he'll take that baby face beating a little bit more, and then out of nowhere, boom, he hits him with a big boot and a lay drop match over. Really, bro? <laughs> You're sitting there like, really, Hogan, you did this again? Right. And but I, you also got you you also got to understand too, and which which a lot of people do. This ain't the '80s anymore, man. This, true. This is two. True. This is the 2000s. This is 20th century, 21st century, I should say. So. Do. So you, know, you believe that still that Braun? Anymore. Did you believe in Braun Strowman still? Because I don't think the uh, the booking team believes in him. No, I don't believe him anymore. Why? Why? Here, here I'll, I'll put it this way. Why should I invest my time and and uh, like my my heart into something when you just basically showed me? That no matter who he goes through, he can't beat Lesnar. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, it'd be a whole entire different story, dude, if if he would have took three F S fives, because he would have still had that monster look to him. Yeah. Like, like uh, you know, Lesnar would have had to, you know, basically to basically destroy him with with three or four F fives before. You know, you would have got the point across, but yeah. doing one F five, dude, and it wasn't like he he took a whole lot that match. He took maybe six freaking uh, German suplexes. That's it. And well, that one F five, boom. Did done. it bother you? Did it bother you that it, they did that, or does it bother you that they did that along with how they ended the John Cena Roman Reigns match? Because that was that 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 finish was kind of yeah, as well, you know. So you add that on top of the the Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar finish, and you know the like I said, I thought the pay per view was, uh, and it make me want to say. I mean, I, I there was a couple of decent moments off of it, but you know, I didn't. It didn't make me want to say, especially at the end of the Braun match, you know, and uh, Brock. I said, well, okay, it's over. And then when you come back, you know, and with the news I'm going to have later, you know. Like, really? <laughs> I mean, we, we, talking about Brock Lesnar, because they didn't even have a they, – they didn't have a plan for Brock Lesnar afterwards from what I'm hearing. You know, if they had right. a plan for him, I'm hearing they didn't have a plan for him afterwards. And they – it seems like they don't have a plan for him, in, I mean, uh, for Braun Strowman either. Um, I think they're going to put their money into this Shield reunion as far as SmackDown or as far as Raw. SmackDown – that's another story. SmackDown is just praying, praying that something catch fire, and they have all of the tools on there to uh, make it a you know a really good show. There's there's spots of SmackDown that I like, but there's also spots that I don't like. You know, um, I think that they have the tools to do a, a, you know to, to bring the numbers back up, and it's Tuesday night. You know, they're on from eight to ten. There's really nothing on Tuesday nights. You should be making. You should have a better right. rating than this. They really should be in the threes. They really should be in the threes with SmackDown. There's no way Monday night. There's they have competition for football, but and but what do you, okay? And, uh, speaking of, um, we're going to do Helen Cell. Helen Cell the uh, predictions later. 
But uh, I just I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I I just I have a feeling that SmackDown. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they decided to go back to, to doing tape shows again. You know, um, because it just seems like this, this isn't working right now. They're not getting the ratings that they should be getting. Either you get the creative team out of there. Or you just go back to doing tape shows. Something. I mean, I vote for getting the creative team out of there. That's what I, I mean. That's what I, that's what it all boils down to. Is the creative team. There, there's no other way to look around it. Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, if if you can have the greatest wrestlers in the world, and if your storylines don't match up to them greatest wrestlers, then it's just going to look like a big, stupid cluster. Beep. And see, here's the thing. This is when, this is why I was such a defender of Vince Russo. And I love Jim Cornette, and I know the beef that they have, and I know why Jim Cornette doesn't like Vince. But here is the thing about Vince Russo. At that time during the Attitude Era, they had some of the greatest, they had some great talent, you know, seasoned veterans, okay? But what made those seasoned veterans, you know, like, Come to the I mean, uh, actually win the the war because it was those seasoned veterans that won the war. What made those seasoned veterans win the war was the daggone the creative team. You have Vince Russo and FAR, and these guys were coming up with great ideas. And they were yeah, if they were going to Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon was being the the filter and the editor the editor of the show, simply hey, that's all well and good. They still had great ideas that was actually getting over. These guys, I mean, I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen right now as far as the creative team. They need to cut it down to maybe three guys. And then if Stephanie wants to be the overall, you know, and, or Vince wants to be the overall, you know, uh, say so, this is my show, blah, blah, blah. All they have to do is let these three writers come up with the two shows, and then they can come and let Vince filter and edit and do whatever he wants to do. But there's too many people with too many opinions going on in the WWE right now. And I understand they have like five or six shows to write for. Then you get, you assign other people to write those shows. You know, you assign a producer to write the, one of the agents to write those shows. You don't bring in guys from Hollywood and have you continuously writing these skits like Saturday night live. And it's cause that's not as professional wrestling, even though Vince McMahon, can, you know, doesn't want it to be professional wrestling, you know, which is sad, which is sad. I, now, I was going to talk about the Impact ratings. Um, I mean, do you really think uh, – I like Impact Wrestling. Do you watch Impact Wrestling, but No. No? Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I, get, I mean, like – it's, like it. it's, it's not that I don't like it. I do I, – I don't have cable, so I can't watch, you know, most of them. That's why I said I don't watch the live feed anyway. I always watch Hulu. Well, and unfortunately, like Impact Wrestling doesn't hit on Hulu, so. Yeah, and it, it'll never be on Hulu, bro. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Do you think Impact Wrestling will ever be on Hulu? <laughs> okay, so guess what? We're not going to talk about their ratings. We're going to go to a break, and uh, we're going to come back with a little bit more news, and we're going to give these hell in a cell predictions for tonight. Uh, you're listening to the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. We'll be right back. Energy Angel Solution, alternative healing services. Do you need some relaxation in your life? Is your mind feeling sluggish? Does your body hurt? Have you been feeling off balance and just not centered lately? Energy Angel Solutions, LLC, offers healing that considers the energy of the whole person, body, mind, and energy for optimal health and wellness. For more information, visit our website at energyangelsolutions.com. Radio, taking it to the edge and back. Does your dog or cat need some much needed attention and pampering? Money Paws, full grooming salon for dogs and cats, featuring full service dog and cat grooming, bath and brush, haircuts, nails, ears, teeth, and rear end cleanup. All done with extra love and attention. It's Muddy Paws. Schedule an appointment today at 412-207-8250. For all your heating and cooling needs, service, and installation, 
Contact our friends at Complete Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning. 412-513-3001. Doesn't your family deserve Complete Comfort? Yes. Loving it. Loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay. And uh, don't forget. Hey, 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 Stefan. Yeah, what's up? Stefan. Yes, sir. Hey, they they, they had another ad on there where you can get your butt cleaned. Hey, man, see, this is what I mean. You know, well, I think I've somebody might want to do that. They might want to kick my butt, actually. Um. I think they also create a little that. butthole and like it like pops a pimple or something and it, you know. Why are you being so and, mean? And, and I'm a like, nice guy. I'm a nice I'm guy. I'm not being. I'm trying to help you out, man. Oh, I'm a nice guy. See, that's what I mean about you, Mister Cassidy. Anyway, well, you see, that's what I mean about you. But you know, but man, anyway. I was just trying to help my brother out. Damn. What was no, dude, so you're just being mean. You're just being mean. You're just being mean. I was going to sit here and eat my damn sausage and eat burrito. Yeah. Actually, that, that that doesn't sound bad right now. Um, Wait, what? I, I was the, think- the butt cleaning or the, or the no, sausage the, the south, the, No, dude. The, 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 well, actually, after you're probably done with that, you will have that. You will get a butt cleaning. So, anyway. Oh, well, uh, moving that. right along. Hey, I want to let these people know that we have a huge show coming up November 4th at the Uniontown State Theater, uh, 37th East, I mean, 37 East Main Street, Uniontown, PA. Uh, give us a call at 724-550-9656 for tickets or visit Bradley's Books Outlet. Um, I can't wait for this show. I really can't, you know. Chatty I really can't. But yes, oh, I can't wait for this show. I really cannot wait for this show. Uh, that's November 4th, State Theater, Uniontown, PA. Uh, need tickets? 724-550-0956 or visit Bradley's Book Outlet. Yeah. Or Caddyshack. Um, or Caddyshack. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, you know. Hey, you should do these reads. I'm tired of doing the reads. I mean, God damn, this is supposed to be a partnership. And I'm horrible at it, too. You know, daggone super producer talk keeps saying, no, well, dude, you got to do them. I don't like doing them, but I'll try. I'll get better at it eventually. Speaking of I'll getting be better. Honest. Yeah, I'll try. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'll be on my knees before every show praying. Ah, I, I don't. No jokes. Anyway, uh, speaking of getting better, <laughs> and he's possible. Uh, hey, I'm just saying. He's probably be on probably on his knees praying that he, you know, and thanking God that he still has a job. But uh, Enzo Amore, are you digging his hill? Ex- uh, this hill experiment they're doing with him. Are you digging it? Yes and no. Um, okay, give me the reasons why you. I've already seen him as a hill. Mm-hmm. But I just think, again, getting back to creative. This this is just like you know what the hell. Mm-hmm. He goes from being face um, for the pay per view, mm-hmm. and then the very next night he's telling the fans it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no logic, no logic at all. You know what's funny though? Um, what I think is funny is when they first did the turn when Big Cass first turned, I think they had it backwards. It really should have been right. Enzo. He was hot at the time and he didn't have so much heat in a locker room that he has now. You know, you hear the rumors about what's going on. Um, but I honestly believe that that was the right time then to turn him heel because he was just so hot. And he could have blamed the fans for turning him, for making him go heel because the fans were cheering Big Cass more. You know, even though in reality they really weren't, he was always getting the loudest cheers. But I think they blew it then. But see now, and here, and what they've done to him now is they put him on uh, 205 Live. He's now the cruiserweight champion. They're trying to make him the face of 205, and he's actually helping the show as far as uh, viewership on a WWE network. Uh, the show 
before was averaging between uh, the placing of 12 and uh, 16. But now the show has broken the top 10, you know, most watched shows on the WWE. And I think uh, this past show was number seven. So, you know, they, that's not bad, you know, on a list that they're trying to, that the show is climbing, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the WWE programming, but I do understand, you know, NXT and, and, uh, and 205, I think those are really cool shows. And I think fans should continue to watch those shows. Um, Enzo as the face. Okay. I'm not too, you know, excited about that, but I'm excited that they at least put somebody who's really good on a microphone as the face of the, you know, of that uh, brand. He's really good on a microphone. Uh, he's a lot better than Neville on a microphone, obviously. Neville, I just, the hell. <laughs> I mean, please. Yeah, he was a good guy. Who was a great guy who can go in a ring and flip. But see, I like guys who can go in a ring and wrestle, like yourself, bud. You know, you don't have to go in there and do a, a, a 450 and blah, 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 you know, in order for you to get your matches over. You get good heat. The fans, you know, they love you. They hate you, whatever, you know, your plan. And they, they care about your matches. Neville, I just don't think the fans really cared about his matches. They cared about two spots and that was it. They'd be happy, you know, they go home. Ah, he's a good dude. But Enzo, they're going to care about his matches, bro. They're going to care about his matches. I really believe that. But I don't think they're going to care about his matches against Kalisto. What do you think about that? Oh, man, I don't want to keep getting back to it. But it, it, it's the creative, dude. I mean, <laughs> I mean, honest to God, dude, it, it really is. Like, I don't want to keep, you know, um, crutching off of that fact. But, God, man, like... Here, here's the thing, okay? Whenever they, when they sent Enzo over to 205, the ratings spiked, okay? And, I mean, yep. they're, they're probably still up there. But you know that this guy has just saved that show's ass. Yeah. What the hell are you doing turning them heel? You already had, I mean, now granted, yes, he might not be the greatest on the mic, and he might not be the greatest wrestler, but at the same time, he was the top heel on 205, which is Neville. So why would See, you I, go and I was never him? really a big Neville fan, but I'm, I, I, I like your argument. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But here's the thing, though, and, and you don't have to be a Neville guy. Mm-hmm. But the whole entire fact is, is, is he got over as a heel. Yeah, he did get over. I mean, he did get over, and I think he got over because, you know, guys like myself just thought he was, uh, you know, he had two two tricks, and that was it. You know, he could do a cool spot off the ropes, and his promos were boring enough they were okay. I tell you right now, the most the most underdog on, on – uh, 205 Live, and I know me and you going to get into a fight right now. Underrated guy right now on 205 Live is Davari's freaking brother. <laughs> if they would what? put that guy... Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> if, they, if Creative would actually give that guy the right storyline, I'm telling you, he would be the most over hill, and he can actually freaking do the, the, the job. I'm sorry. He could. Yeah, let me think of this. Let me think. Let me see. Let me think. Who who would I put in that spot? Okay, I could see, you know, the Davari dude. All right, I could see. Now, who? okay, who else would I put in that spot? I'm sorry, man. Damn. I really got to go with a Hill Enzo. No, I, but I just think the logic of how they turned him Hill was just – there was none. <laughs> there was no. There it was. There was none. You know, like you said, <clears throat> wins the belt the night before as a face comes back. The next scene, you know, they comes back the next episode and he's sitting there telling people, you know, you're. The, I get it, dude. You know, I did. Enjoy, I did enjoy him trashing. You know, the, the cruiserweight division though. That was pretty funny. I really enjoyed that. You know, um, but anyway. Uh, I think it's a good thing that he's going to be there and, you know, we'll just see how that plays out. Um, 
But real quick, I got a couple of things, uh, a couple of rumors that I want to get to, and then we got to get to a break so we can come back with our I'm going to sell predictions that I'm going to win this week. I can't wait. But um, Brock yeah, Lesnar is saying, dreaming. Hey, I'm going to win. Brock Lesnar, uh, they're saying he'll be coming back. We were talking about this a little bit ago. But he'll be back for Survivor Series. Um, Jeff Hardy's going to have uh, a second sh- shoulder surgery next week. Uh, his last surgery, his last surgery dealt with his rotator cuff, and uh, I guess they got to go in there and do something else to it. But the Shield, they say that Shield is going to reunite tomorrow. Now these are all rumors. Now the Shield is supposed to reunite tomorrow, night on Raw. Yawn. I can't believe. Yeah, yeah. They're desperate. That's what you call it, desperate. They're really desperate because they, I guess they're. T- you know, here's something funny. The Miz, this is why I love The Miz, okay? The Miz can turn anybody's face. He, I mean, he, he'll make anybody get cheered when they're up against him. Look, they got And that's, why, that's why he's the most underrated person in WWE right now. Got that going right. And he's going to get that title run. I, I'm actually predicting right now that Miz will have a title run right before WrestleMania. I wouldn't be shocked if he's going to it WrestleMania. Is WWE, it is WWE uh, creative team, so... Hey, yeah, true. Hey. Well, no, 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 no. They'll, they'll find a way to put him on 205 Live or <laughs> Eternal Face and have a face in, have a face in zone. I mean, come on, bro. I can see it happening. But um, the, the Shield reuniting, the uh, yeah, the go up against Mr. Miz, I, I can't wait for that. I want to see how that's going to work out. Um, am I interested? And seeing the shield, no, I'm more interested in seeing how the Miz is going to make these guys look like a million dollars. So, last but not least, uh, they're saying Samoa Joe, who was on the shelf for the injury himself, he should be back uh, sometime next month. And that's the rumors. You know, I'm going to have to start putting some music in the background when I do the rumors. I might make it sound a little bit better. Yeah. We'll see the super producer talking. What's your... He's the man. What's your what's your what's your background song gonna be a train of men? Hey man. See this is what I mean about you, bud. Then I thought we were best friends. You know what? That's it. We're going to a break. And then when we come back in retaliation, I'm going to kick your booty. In the it's raining oh, men. It's raining men. I'm listening to the Devro Committee of Pro Wrestling here on the Idiot Radio Network. He is so mean. You're listening to Idiot Radio. Take it to the edge and back. Looking for a creative idea for meetings, business lunches, and special events? Call Spiels on Wheels, food truck, and catering, and take the stress away. For more information, call them at 724-244-9881 or on Facebook at facebook.com slash spielson.wheels. Pizza and Gyro Express. 801 O'Neill Boulevard in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. For menus, coupons, specials, and catering info, visit our website at pizzaandgyroexpress.com. Order online or by phone at 412-672-2182. Don't forget about the lunch buffet and drink every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for just $10. The original Pizza and Gyro Express. Don't settle for anything less. Does your dog or cat need some much-needed attention and pampering? Money Paws, full grooming salon for dogs and cats. Featuring full-service dog and cat grooming, bath and brush, haircuts, nails, ears, teeth, and rear-end cleanup. All done with extra love and attention. It's Money Paws. Schedule an appointment today at 412-207-8250. He is so mean. He is so mean. He it's so rain. mean. It's raining so men. You are so it, mean. It, it, no, no, no. I was it's going to be rapping. raining winds. Raining winds. Because I plan on winning. This is, I'm going to start my streak. I'm going to start my streak <laughs> of beating you in the prediction game. Hey, because I'm, I, I, got I'm, another, I got another song you can sing to yourself. What? There's a tear in my beard. <laughs> That's not, and you know, hey, 
Hey, hey, I like that song actually. Now you're making me not like it. <laughs> you know, I like that song. Anyway, you know, I might have to bring some country music on here sometimes. Yeah. So, see, that could be a great background song too, because for you next week, as you're telling me that I'm the man and the king of Helen, I mean the king of predictions when I beat you in the Helena Cell prediction game here. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. But before we move on to the predictions, I want to remind you, fans, uh, UWF. Oh, oh man, United Wrestling Federation, November fourth, coming to the State Theater in Uniontown, PA, thirty-seven East Main Street. Get them tickets, 724-550-0956 at the, or Bradley's Book Outlet. And where else, bud? At the Caddy Shack. At the Caddy Shack. Yeah. On Dixon Boulevard. Dixon Boulevard, yes. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, Dixon, um, well, we won't talk about him. I have a, a buddy named Dixon that I want to talk about. You know, he's a, a, a he's a radio well, not a radio guy. He's a beat maker. You know, he does some pretty decent beats. You know, he's a producer and all. But anyway, we want to talk about him. We're going to talk about Hell in the Cell prediction time. Yes, aha! Let's get the music queued up. I cannot wait. It's raining, <sighs> man. Hallelujah! It's, fair, bro. it's, it's not fair. Huh? It's not fair. What? Oh, That's well, I thought fair. you said cue the music. I'm sorry. I, no. I was just... You're so mean. Well, okay, let's start off with Bobby Roode taking on Dolph Ziggler. But who do you like in that match? I'm taking Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode? Yep. You know... Man, this, this one's hard for me, actually. Um... To be honest with you, I really like Bobby Roode in this match, too, but for some reason, I see Dolph Ziggler, you know, them putting some more heat on Dolph Ziggler, and he wins, and hit, he wins this match. I can see him winning this match by DQ. So, you got Dol- you got Bobby, and I got Dolph. All right, let's move on. You already lost. No, I think I want to win this one. Okay, let's move on. I think I want to win with that match. Actually, that could be my, uh, my wild card match to win with. Anyway, Rusev. Taking on, hold on, let me do that right. Rusev taking on Randy Orton. What do you like? Wait, wait, who was it? Rusev taking on Randy Orton. I got Randy Orton on that one. Randy? Oh, man. See, these things are becoming so hard for me now. Um,. To be honest with you, I like Randy as well, but it's kind of like the same thing with the Rusev thing. I can see Rusev getting DQ'd. Honestly, the same thing with this Dolph Ziggler. You know, and their creative is so horrible now, they really can't come up with a creative finish these days. So, I can see uh, Randy Orton winning that match as well. Okay. We have come together. See? That's how you work together as a team. Still got you on a Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler match. I shall win that. Let's go to the United States title match between AJ Styles and Baron Corbin. I'm going with AJ. Hmm. That's interesting. I was. I, I just don't think that was, Baron. I, I I just don't think he's ready. I don't think he's ready either, and that's why I think they're going to go with him. <laughs> the track record of the creative team has shown us that they like to go with the people who are not ready. The guys are not expecting, you know. He's the guy. He's that guy right now. I, I, he's not ready. You're absolutely correct. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a great match, but I'm going to go with Baron Corbin, and also Baron rhymes with, you know. One of my my favorite names of all time. Anyway, let's go to the women's championship match. Women's championship. Uh, Natalia Hart. Not Hart. However, whatever name she wants to go by today. Versus Charlotte Flair. Who do you like in that match? I got Natalia. And uh, let me tell you why. Because I see this as her, her last title run. I think after this title run here, dude, it's going to be shortly that I think she's going to be hanging them up. So I think they're going to give wow. her the title a little bit longer. Wow, that's not. Mm. Mm. 
That's a great. Uh, you got me really thinking on this one now, because honestly and truthfully, I was go- I was actually going to pick Charlotte Flair, and I made t- you. Oh my goodness, you're you're talking me out of that because your argument is winning. <laughs> it's winning in my brain right now because my argument was I honestly thought that they were going to give Charlotte the title because Charlotte is about to do this. You know, she's doing this book run and everything, this book tour. Um, she's, you know, doing the tour with her dad and everything. And I could see her doing interviews with the championship belt. Um, man, damn, that argument, that argument is so strong. Her last title run and they're really, they're going to invest in her. I'm just saying, look how long it took him to get her a title. Yeah, that's the end. She won it, she won it, she won it way, way back then. And then... Now, granted, you know, my years might be off, but I'm thinking at least eight, if not ten years. And then finally they give it to her. And, and she's, at, she's at that age where, you know, it's either hit or miss. Uh, and or, Well, now, see, here's a, here's a crazy part. Now, I wish I could go into some ratings in her matches. Because if we had ratings of her match, I could see if, if she was getting over with the championship. Because, you, know, you know, that plays into it well. You know, uh, mm. okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with my original feeling. I'm gonna go with Charlotte because we spent too much time on it. That's a good one. We're gonna come back and debate that one next week too. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Um, okay, so now we have a Hell in a Cell tag title match uh, between the Usos and New Day. Who do you like in that match? Um. I would hope the Usos, but yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with New Day. All right, you're going to go with New Day. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I don't see, know I why, but I, I have a feeling that WWE Creative is going to want to. Um, oh shit! What the hell are it called? The New Day. Um. They want they want them to basically be the longest reigning or and the, and the uh, the tag team who actually wins in the most time. So yeah. I'm just going to go ahead okay, and go I'm, with New Day. Screw it. I'm, I'm going to go with New Day too. All right, we got two quick ones here, even though they're the main events of the show. Um, we got the WWE Championship match between Jinder Mahal and Shinsuke Nakamura. Who do you like? I got to get Jinder Mahal. <laughs> Gender. I'm hoping fucking yeah. I'm hoping yeah. WWE created don't screw this one up. Yeah, they're going. I'm gonna go with gender too because they're really doing. They're really pushing this Indian, this uh, India thing. And I was talking to a uh, chick from that from India uh, the other day, and she said, "Yeah, Gender Mahal is as big as the Great Khali over there now." And I, I was like shocked. Okay, uh, we have 90 seconds here. Uh, we got the Hell in a Cell match between Dave McMahon versus Kevin Owens. Yes, who do you like in that? I'm taking Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, yeah, and that makes more sense to me. You know, they're going. And to then one more, we got Chad. Shot. We got Chad Gable and uh, Shelton Benjamin versus the Hype Bros. You know, I really did forget about that match. That's a shame. Um, I'll go with Chad and Shelton to win that match. Yep, that's who I'm going with. I like them too. Okay. You know what? We had an awesome show this week, and I want to thank you for listening. Don't forget, get them tickets, uh, 724-550-0956 for the November 4th show, UWF, coming to the State Theater in Uniontown, PA. And uh, get them tickets again, 724-550-0956, or go to Bradley's Book Outlet or Caddyshack. We have so many places. But, wrestling fans, I want to thank you for joining us. We will be back here next week. The Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling and on Idiot Radio Network. And I hear we're going to be in the studio. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week. About time.